Hello everybody, my name is Dirty Dutch Mantel and Mountain Empire, this is your wrestling. Hey there wrestling fans, welcome to Southern States Wrestling Power Half Hour. I'm your host, Dakota Booth. Today is all about our upcoming event, September 27th at the Kingsport Civic Auditorium. We have some footage to show you and a lot of big announcements. But the first thing I want to tell you is that you can still get your VIP ticket right now during business hours at Evermore Comics on Eastman Road in Kingsport or anytime at kingofkingsport.com. Those tickets are $15, they get you a front row seat, and they get you into the building about 90 minutes early for a meet and greet with all of the stars and the legends that are going to be there September 27th at the Kingsport Civic Auditorium. Let's get this episode started off right by giving our first big announcement, and that is a star returning to Southern States Wrestling, Eric Darkstorm. So let's take a look at him in some action. I've enjoyed what I've seen so far. Kyle Matthews in control, some beautiful drop kicks there. Now Darkstorm battling back up to his feet. Max him into the ropes here. Here we go. Sends him off far side. Next clothesline. Here comes Kyle Matthews. Misses the crossbody. Darkstorm. A very smart maneuver. There you see it pointing to the head. The mind games. Out thinking his opponent momentarily. Misses the crossbody. You know, we see we know Darkstorm is a very smart individual. He spends a lot of time up here in West Virginia studying wrestling tapes. And I'm sure he's seen a many of tapes on Kyle Matthews. He had that spot well scouted with the crossbody. Here we go again. Sends him off. Big move there. Takes him out of the throat. Kyle Matthews is down and in trouble. We've seen Matthews in control moments ago and Darkstorm has quickly turned things around. Now with a backbreaker, Michael Sutherland. It's been back and forth. Right now, pure talent, Eric Darkstorm in control. Absolutely. Marietta, Georgia native, Kyle Matthews, widely regarded as one of the top young athletes in professional wrestling today. If he wasn't, he wouldn't be wrestling right here in Southern States Wrestling. But actually, he said, hey, this is the place to be. I want to come wrestle. Let's get an opponent together. Eric Darkstorm makes his return to Southern States Wrestling a few months ago. So it's only good logic to put these gentlemen together and give a wrestling lesson, one that we can critique in that ring as being one of the best you're going to see anywhere. And as you can see, I can't sit here and say that either man has had an advantage throughout this match because you have two minutes of Kyle Matthews on top. You have two minutes of Eric Darkstorm on top, and let's go back and forth. We got a reversal now, and catches him with a big leg lariat and sends Matthews down. Darkstorm on top, and only a two count, and that's all we've seen over the last little bit is one and two counts. And now you can see we got a reverse chin lock now, and basically this is going to be a wear down hold, boys. This is going to take a lot of energy out of Kyle Matthews, and it's very smart on Darkstorm's point to zap all the energy that he can out of that fire shell in the ring there, because if not, he can hit him real quick, and it'd be over with. Absolutely right, Michael Southern. When we talk about our matchmakers here in Southern States Wrestling, Big Al Bass and Mac McMurray, and we talk about them working overtime, this is the type of match that they put together for you, the fans of Southern States Wrestling, putting together two great young lions like this who both have traveled all across the country, both have wrestled for numerous promotions all across the country and all around the world, but they never once have crossed paths. And that's the type of unique matchup that Al Bass and Mac McMurray can bring to you right here in Southern States Wrestling, and that's the kind of action we're giving to you right now. Let me interject just one thing, and these two guys don't come at a small price tag either because they could have wrestled anywhere across the country tonight, and they demand to be paid for their business in the ring, and so that's what we're saying about Al Bass and Mac McMurray. They shelled out the money to bring these two gentlemen in here for the fans of the Mountain Empire, for the fans of Southern States Wrestling. That's why we say this is the greatest promotion in this part of the country, and because we're bringing the action like this to the fans. 
Over 20 years of bringing wrestling excellence to the Mountain Empire as only Southern States Wrestling can. And Kyle Matthews right there brought the knees up and caught Eric Darkstorm in a bad, bad way as the momentum of this match it seems to have turned, at least for the moment, as Darkstorm, though, makes a recovery and a big, hard body slam driving his man into the canvas. But he missed with that back elbow. That speed of Kyle Matthews paid off right there, Matt Rhodes. Yeah, it did. Also, Darkstorm was very slowed up from that accidental low blow. That was an accident. This match continues, and here comes Matthews fighting back with right, left, right, and another left, and Darkstorm cut him off. Matthews seemed to have the momentum. Darkstorm cuts him off. He decks the clothesline. Oh, both men go for the same thing. Cross bodies. Both men crash and burn. Both men are down, and here is Jake Booth with a 10 count. Neither man may not be able to answer. Darkstorm's looking for the corner. Matthews may be looking for the corner as well. And the man up to his feet here may have the advantage, Michael. Here comes Patton. Dark Storm! Matthews had that well scouted. Here comes Matthews off the far side. Benny head scissor takeover. And look at a clothesline. And it's a going back and forth down business. It's picking up with a drop kick. Oh, man. Kyle Matthews solidly in control now. Listen to the crowd, man. They're really enjoying what they're seeing. Covered him for a two count only. And Eric Darkstorm, man, he just took a repertoire of maneuvers right there that really took a lot out of him. He caught him very, very quickly with a chin breaker. And I think that was almost on accident because I'm not sure Darkstorm knew exactly where he was at. And uh, drives him down there with a uh, sit down clothesline almost. Took him straight down to the canvas. And only a two count there and you can see uh, Darkstorm holding the back of his head. I can almost imagine what the look on his face was. A look of chagrin on the face as he was disappointed. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to capitalize on that and get a three count. Look at this now. Sends him in. Uh-oh. Caught him there. <laughs> oh, Matthews right there. Just nailed Darkstorm with that kick. Over the top rope, what athleticism being displayed there by Kyle Matthews. Up and over his man right there, rolls him up. Oh, and he caught him right there with a karate kick right to the side of the head. This could do it. Oh, Eric Darkstorm was able to reach out and grab hold of that bottom rope as referee Jake Booth was right there. Great job of officiating by Jake Booth. But what tremendous action we've seen so far between Darkstorm and Matthews in this contest. As the crowd here in Mount Carmel, they are loving every minute of this, rallying behind Matthews as he brings this man back up. Oh, he went for the slam, but Darkstorm was too much. But Matthews was able to kick out of there on a two count. Darkstorm setting up here in position, rolls forward, misses that big kick as Matthews now has him, rolls him up on his own. He could have him here, two count only. What great action, Matt Rhodes. Matthews head off that middle turnbuckle, and Darkstorm got it this time! Rolling against the Gary. Pat the Eric Darkstorm with a covered leg, hooked, and a three, that's Whoa. it! Eric Darkstorm with a big victory over Kyle Matthews. Oh my goodness, this match could have went either way, but we see Darkstorm the winner. Eric Darkstorm will be returning to Southern States Wrestling September 27th at the King Sports Civic Auditorium where he will be facing Wolfie D in what should be a classic match that you don't want to miss. When we come back from this break, we're going to take a look at a Legends Grudge match that's going down September 27th, so don't touch that dial. Jerry the King Lawler and Mountain Empire, this is your wrestling. Calvary Baptist Church, 1238 Pine Street, Kingsport, Tennessee. Regular schedule of services, Sunday, 9.15 a.m. for Bible study fellowship class for all ages. 10.30 a.m. worship. 6 p.m. blast for children, wake for youth. Sunday night life for adults. Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. children and youth activities. 3D Bible study for adults. My name is Tim Young, and this is my marketing firm. We represent clients all over the globe. And like the king of king sport, I'm the king of marketing. So if you need anything, 
web design, social media, commercials, advertising, creative, jingles. I'll write a jingle right now to show you how good I am. It'll be in the next commercial. Tim Young's unnamed marketing firm. You need us. If you are part of a nonprofit organization, listen to this. You now have the opportunity to bring the wrestling TV stars to your town and make money for your group. Over the past two decades, Southern States Wrestling has helped raise money for church groups, schools, ball teams, volunteer fire departments, children's hospitals, Ronald McDonald House, scout troops, and many more. Our staff is waiting to hear from you and get started on what could be your biggest fundraiser to date. Southern States Wrestling and your group are the perfect tag team to raise the funds you need. The TV stars of the Power Half Hour are coming to a town near you. It's the Southern States Wrestling Fall Spectacular. Saturday night, September 27th, Kingsport, Tennessee at the Civic Auditorium. That's the Fall Spectacular, Saturday night, the 27th of September, Kingsport Civic Auditorium. Hall of Fame, Heroes and Legends Night. More information each week here on the Power Half Hour. Saturday night, September 20th, Five County Fair, Farmville, Virginia, presented by the Bruiser Wrestling Federation. Saturday night, September 13th, Gray, Tennessee, Daniel Boone High School, a fundraiser for the Daniel Boone High School Marching Band. A huge night of action as Southern States Wrestling and the Empire Wrestling Coalition team up to raise money for the Daniel Boone Band. Welcome back to the Southern States Wrestling Power Half Hour. So far we've been telling you all about September 27th. And one more thing that we're going to tell you is that we're happy to announce a Legends Grudge Match will be happening that night. It has been signed. Rock and Roll Express legend Ricky Morton will be facing his longtime rival, Dr. Tom Pritchard. These two have been feuding for many years from the Continental Wrestling to Smoky Mountain Wrestling to WCW all the way to WWE. They have a ton of history here, so right now let's take a look at some of that bad blood that's gone down between these two. They would uh, train many of the superstars that uh, you see right now. Tom Pritchard, they're responsible for the, the training of uh, Dwayne Johnson. You know him as The Rock, former uh, Olympic champion Kurt Angle, one of the former pupils of Dr. Tom Pritchard. Uh, the list goes on. Many of uh, the biggest superstars in the world of professional wrestling, this guy, Tom Pritchard, has had the opportunity to train. He finds himself uh, here tonight to take on Ricky Morton here at this 14th anniversary celebration for Southern States Wrestling. Sort of a feeling out process uh, between these two. And a hook em horn sign as Dr. Tom feels he has the upper hand on Ricky Morton. These two uh, veterans of the squared circle are uh, in unbelievable condition. They are uh, athletes uh, from the word go and expect uh, one whale of a championship contest here tonight. And as I mentioned, this contest uh, for the Texas Heavyweight Championship, uh, uh, once again coming into this evening, it was just a special attraction, but uh, now we have got the gold on the line. We are excited about this, and we're excited to have uh, this capacity crowd here at the Kingsport Armory as uh, we celebrate uh, in grand style 14 years of Southern States Wrestling. This contest, uh, uh, not the final card or final uh, match of the evening, got a big uh, stampede battle royal on the way next with uh, uh, almost 20 stars of Southern States Wrestling here as uh, Dr. Tom Pritchard, Ricky Morton uh, wrapped up into the ropes. We'll see if we can get a clean break here. I'm guessing no, and uh, my assumptions would be correct as Ricky Morton and Tom Pritchard now continue to work each other over at a hip toss by Ricky Morton. Shoulder block takedown, Pritchard is down, and another one. Thump, Tom Pritchard is going to uh, take a breather. As he works himself uh, almost back uh, out of the uh, building. And Ricky Morton now working over Dr. Tom Pritchard. Rolls over, two count. Back over for another two count. Morton complaining that uh, Pritchard has a handful of tights when he works over for that pin. And sure enough, Mark Foley saw it and pushed him back over. Ricky Morton continues now to uh, wrench in that headlock on Dr. Tom Pritchard. As I mentioned, a former member of the Body Donnas, also uh, the Heavenly Bodies, who uh, captured uh, many a tag team championship uh, as uh, they uh, de defeated uh, all comers uh, uh, back uh, in, in the early 90s. 
as they were managed by the legendary Jim Cornette. Pritchard down, gets a bit of an upper hand, but it's quickly nullified as he goes for the elbow, nobody home, and Ricky Morton back at it. He goes for the headlock, and as a residual out of it, and a good residual, he gets a, a chance at a pin there and almost comes away the victory here, which would then uh, give Ricky Morton the Texas Heavyweight Championship. So you want to talk about uh, some uh, tag team uh, wrestlers on the card here tonight. We've already seen beautiful Bobby Eaton. We uh, uh, talked about his exploits with the Midnight Express, uh, with uh, Dennis Condry, as well as uh, Stan Lane in latter years. And really, the... Uh, you talk about Eaton, you talk about Pritchard, and you talk about Ricky Morton, and uh, really the one thing that sort of brings them all together is their relationship, be it good or bad, with Jim Cornette. As I mentioned, Cornette, a manager of the Heavenly Bodies and the Midnight Express, and a uh, sworn enemy of the Rock and Roll Express. As we now see Dr. Tom Pritchard, the uh, Texas native, working over Ricky Morton, and uh, continues with a shot there to the uh, upper back, just below the neck. Guess that would be the exuberance protuberance. Pritchard now, wrenching headlock, twisting that neck, not supposed to turn that way, but it is. Referee Mark Foley asking Ricky Morton if he would like to uh, end this assault. He does not. And Tom Pritchard continues to work over Ricky Morton. Got that front chin lock on the uh, former tag champion, Ricky Morton. Not only, as I mentioned, Ricky Morton, a uh, fantastic tag team competitor we have uh, seen uh, over the years. He is a wonderful singles competitor, too. Uh, series of matches uh, with Ric Flair back in the 80s, uh, especially during uh, those uh, wonderful uh, summer tours for the Great American Bash, and Ricky Morton would go toe-to-toe -to -toe, who, with uh, arguably the greatest wrestler of this generation, Ric Flair, would go 60 minutes with the Nature Boy. Old jawbreaker there by Ricky Morton as he tries to uh, get back into this match. He'll take a uh, close fist shot to the stomach, another one. High knee by Ricky Morton, and Tom Pritchard is down as look who has decided, speak of the devil, to come to the ring. It is beautiful Bobby Eaton. We've talked about him tonight as a roll up here for Ricky Morton at a two count. And here comes Bobby Eaton into the ring and a neck breaker and we're gonna ring the bell. So Bobby Eaton out of nowhere, we saw Ricky Morton get involved in Bobby Eaton's match earlier on. And uh, apparently Bobby Eaton is uh, a little upset at that and decided to return the favor. A big neck breaker on Ricky Morton and Ricky Morton now getting double teamed. This match is over. Morton will win by disqualification. But uh, Dr. Tom Pritchard, and we've got to, we've got to, uh, the clearing into the ring. I mean, we... September the 27th, Civic Auditorium, Keysport, Tennessee. I have been sitting for days and days thinking, dwelling on how Rebecca has beat me out of my matches that I've had with her. How she has kept that title. The more I think about it, the madder I get. One time she had me held down, she had me by my trunks and I couldn't even kick out. The second time she ran off with the belt. Never seen her again that night. The third time she had her manager throw powder in my eyes so I would be blinded and I could not see what was coming next. Rebecca Lynn, the more I think about it, the matter I get. This is where I go to think. This is where I go to get my mind straight. Now I just found out a couple of days ago that I do, if I do not win at the Civic Auditorium in Keysport, Tennessee on September 27th, that I have to wait and I have to wait until another competitor comes along and beats you, Rebecca. I don't want to wait forever. I don't want to wait that long. So Rebecca Lynn, you better get yourself ready, sweetheart, because September 27th, I'm coming with everything I've got in me. I'm coming with every fight that I have ever fought in me. I'm determined that that night, Everything you did to me, Rebecca Lynn, is going to be in the back of my mind when I'm standing in that, in that ring, in that square circle, 
looking at you across from me. Rebecca Lynn, you better get ready. Because, girl, you have messed with the wrong girl. September 27th, Rebecca Lynn, get yourself ready. Because this country strong girl is coming with everything. I'm coming to fight. And I'm going to get back what belongs to me. There you saw some historical matches between two legends and heard from our very own Misty James about her upcoming match against Rebecca Lynn on September 27th. We asked Rebecca Lynn for an interview, but she declined and said she wasn't going to waste her time. So take that how you will. It seems like some bad blood is boiling between these two ladies right now. Stay tuned, wrestling fans, because when we come back, we have the biggest announcement of the night. I'm Ronnie Garvin and Mountain Empire, this is your wrestling. Attention Mountain Empire. Do you have a business, website, products, or an event to promote? Let us help you reach the masses with TV and internet ads. For just a few dollars a week, we offer commercial spots on Southern States Wrestling, reaching over 150,000 homes in the Mountain Empire and the world with YouTube. Don't wait. Jump on this opportunity now to reach a large audience for an affordable price. Email sswking at aol.com for all the info. Advertising packages you cannot afford to pass up. Is it on? Okay, in my last commercial, I said that I could make a jingle about it. Don't leave the room and we're filming. And you probably didn't think that I had an accordion, but I do. So I wanted to make a theme song for Southern States Wrestling. That'll be the jingle. The jingle is the theme song for Southern States Wrestling. We're going to make it right now. This accordion. Ready? One, two, three. With the economy changing almost daily and not always for the best, let Hassie's Kitchen Table.com keep your food budget under control. Leave the work up to us as we find inexpensive recipes, cooking, and shopping tips. You will soon have all the tips, ideas, recipes you need to feed your family well on a budget and have fun while doing it. It's the Southern States Wrestling Fall Spectacular. Saturday night, September 27th, Kingsport, Tennessee at the Civic Auditorium. That's the Fall Spectacular. Saturday night, the 27th of September, Kingsport Civic Auditorium. Hall of Fame, Heroes and Legends Night. More information each week here on the Power Half Hour. Welcome back to the Southern States Wrestling Power Half Hour. You've been hearing for a few weeks about the Tennessee chain match that's going to happen September 27th at the Kingsport Civic Auditorium between Bo James and Frank Parker to finally settle the score. Well, there has been a problem with that match. When the match was announced, every licensed SSW referee went to Joe Wheeler, who went to the championship committee and refused to be a part of it for fear of their own safety. So the championship committee met. They've met three times and they have picked a special guest referee. As we go off the air this evening, you're going to hear from both superstars individually, of course, and then you're going to find out who the special guest referee for the Tennessee chain match between Bo James and Frank Parker September 27th at the Kingsport Civic Auditorium will be. Be sure to join us next week. Same time, same place. September 27th, the night Southern States Wrestling makes history. The return to the Kingsport Civic Auditorium. And in the main event, <laughs> I get my hands on Bo James one more time. But this time, it's going to be a little special. You see, chain match. When you lock that chain on, there's no running, there's no escaping, no help coming. It's me and you. It's the night of Hall of Fame. The night they're going to be honoring many, many legends in this business. But the only thing those people are going to remember when they leave is how Frank Parker ended the career of Bo James. The chain match is vicious. Hey, hey Frank. Check this out. Did you see what? It? Look, look, look down at the bottom. Look. What? Did you sign this? Did you actually sign this? Well, I didn't see this. 
special referee Brian Logan. Special referee Brian Logan? Brian Logan, special referee. You've got to be kidding me. He's not even around anymore. You know, oh, my gosh. What's he doing? I've never been able to trust him. Nobody. Hell, Bo James can't even trust him. The guy's an idiot. He's crazy. I have always called him the real life loose cannon. And now he's going to be an authority figure in this match? And you signed your name to this. Oh my goodness. Brian Logan, I cannot believe this. Oh my God, what's Bo going to do? What's Keysport Civic Auditorium going to do when that idiot walks in the ring? We got to talk. We got to talk. For the near past 30 minutes, I have sat here and watched this week's program as Dakota was telling you all about Eric Darkstorm coming back to face Wolfie D. Told you about the Legends match with Dr. Tom Pritchard and Ricky Morton. What a classic that's going to be. He's told you about the dirty white boy coming to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. You heard from my beautiful wife, Misty James, as she talked about you, Rebecca Lynn, and that chase that she has for the Southern States ladies title. And I also just sit right here and heard the announcement and looked in this monitor and heard you, Frank Parker, and you, Scott Sterling, talking about the Tennessee chain match, the most brutal match in the history of East Tennessee, the way Ronnie Garvin settled his score with the Mongolian Stomper, the way Ron Wright and Whitey Caldwell settled it, the way the Fuller family settled it, the most deadly match because you can take that steal and you can beat your opponent and you can do whatever you want to until you beat him to the point that you can drag him around the ring and touch all four corners and have your hand raised. And that's exactly what I've been planning, exactly what I've been thinking about. Until today, I'm told the special referee is Brian Logan, somebody that I never thought I would ever be back on this television talking about again. I know Logan better than anybody out there, and there's two things that I know about him. He's crazier than an outhouse rat, and you can't trust him. He's been my partner. He's been my opponent over the years. He has put scars upon my body just like you, Frank Parker, just like you, Scott Sterling. I've already had to worry about you, Frank Parker, and everything that I'm going to have to do to beat you. i got to worry about looking out there on the floor to see if Scott Sterling is going to try to interfere, and now I have to worry about the referee that Joe Wheeler and the championship committee has put in the ring. I'm not hot, happy about this one bit. But here's what I want to say to you, Brian Logan. You call it down the middle. You call it fair. You stay out of the way and let us settle it, and there'll be no problems. Frank Parker, I have waited for months for this. The 27th of September, Kingsport, Tennessee, a building that is very special to me. I grew up hearing the stories of Ron Wright, Whitey Caldwell, Rocky Smith, Frankie Kane, Lou Thez, all the greats that came to the Kingsport Civic Auditorium. I have won titles in this building. I have lost titles in this building. But I got some special moments. I remember the packed house when I told everybody I was going to send the Duke of New York out of Southern States Wrestling or never show my face again. I did it. The night I put Robert Fuller to sleep right there in the middle of the ring. And everybody for weeks had been telling me that Tennessee Stud is coming and he's going to shut you up, Bo James. Frank Parker, I'm here to tell you that Bo James is coming, and he's coming to shut you up. For all the pain, the blues, and the agony that you put on me, for all the worry you put on my family, for all the financial strains that you put on me with doctor bills, and not being able to make a living for five and a half months. The 27th of September, I'm coming to get even. It's to settle the score once and for all. 20 years. It is time that one of us comes out the true clean-cut victor, the 27th of September. They put the chain around my wrist. They put the chain around your wrist. There's eight feet of log chain in between us that we can beat each other in the head, the face, and the body with. The 27th of September, Brian Logan, you stay out of the way. You're there to raise somebody's hand and make sure nobody else gets involved. That's it, plain and simple. The 27th of September, Frank Parker, I'm coming at you like nobody has ever come at you before. Lord, forgive me for what I'm about to do to this man.